I forgot her name. You probably heard the name. She's so anti-gun, it's not even funny. But uh, just a simple conversation with her saying, hey, let me go on ahead and get that gun from you. You know, set it to the side. Even if you don't report it to the state, why didn't anyone remove the gun? And so you got the father saying she's a loving mother. She's this, she's that. I don't want to hear that shit. No one was willing to die to put themselves on the line to sit there and take that gun away from her. I agree. Somebody should have stepped in. Here we go. John Jones, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to open it up to you guys. The father should have been, and uh, Chrissy asked a question on here about the Brevard County uh, Sheriff's ambush. I want to dive into that too. See what you guys think about that. Uh, the father should have been more proactive and mindful of the child's well-being in the care of a mental case mother. The whole family is to blame for this child's death. Just pathetic. You know, John, that's a trigger to a whole other conversation about fathers being able to step in because there are permissive and not permissible environments. And when it comes down to the court system, sometimes fathers have a hard time trying to be in the life of the mother because or it, you know, actively not relationship wise, but to be in there, to be able to step in and say something because the mother, we don't know what kind of woman she was. She could have been a total itch bay. True. You see what I'm saying? But, and it could have yeah. Made it, yeah, you, yeah, pig Latin in this bad boy. And she would have made it a non-permissible environment where the thought of him stepping in would cause him to lose whatever he's got. Mm hmm you know, and we don't know how she was as a woman with her child. We don't know that. Hell, even family members may not know that, or they might have known it and swept that shit under the rug. It's so many things because what could make you, you know, kill your child? It's a lot of stuff that could make you kill your child. No, no, I disagree, Mike. Go Mike, ahead. Mike. Yeah. What the fuck is so fucking important? It could possibly make you kill your child. I mean, really? If no, you I don't. I, I disagree with you there, brother. I love you, but what? Jacob, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You're right, though. I get it. Here we go. If you raise your child to praise you because you have deep psychological issues and your child doesn't praise you or your child stands up against you or your child looks like your damn daddy, or your child, you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of psychologically ill issues, even insane persons, right, that can make someone decide under that influence to do that. Not justifying it. I'm saying it's bullshit. That's a whole deep conversation right there. Right. I tell you what, brother. I was, uh, I almost lost my job in law enforcement 16 years ago, I only had, I don't know, eight or nine years in at the time. I was a lieutenant and going through a divorce. And my ex-wife being uh, trying to punish me, even though yes. I did nothing wrong, my ex-wife wanted the divorce. She wanted to leave my kids and out of my life. The kids were five years old and three years old and I tried and tried and tried and I fought for custody and I fought for visitation and I fought for therapy, unity, you know, like family unity therapy. I fought her every fucking tooth and nail and she threatened that if I didn't leave her alone on that, on trying to reunite the family, that she was going to call the cops who I knew because I trained them. She was going to call our local cops and say, He's a crazy combat veteran. He's a he's got lots of guns and he's threatening me. And boom, there goes my guns and there goes my job. Because yes. you can't be a cop if you can't have a gun. You can't have a gun, you can't be a cop, boom, you're done. And I had to go talk to the PD, local guys, and say, look, man, this is what's going on. I had to talk to my boss at my job and say, hey, man, I'm trying to work this out. I just want visitation of my kids. That's all I want. I just want to see my kids on a regular basis. That's all I'm asking for. And to think that, you know, that was before we had red flag laws, but all she had to do at the time was get an emergency order of protection against me, and I'd have been done. Yes. You know? And yes. that scared the hell out of me. So and I feel for these people. I, I'm very reluctant 
to support any type of emergency order protection because I've been there. I know what it's like to go through that. I have and to. Yeah, you too? Yeah. Yes, I have to. So yes. maybe it might help. You know, one out of a thousand, it might actually help. But the other 999, you're just fucking with somebody just to piss them off or make their life miserable. Then that's there needs to be criminal sanctions, criminal charges against somebody that files a false report. That's what yes. I think. Yes. If yeah. you file some bullshit charges against your ex-husband or your boyfriend or your baby mama just because, just to fuck with them, and it's unsubstantiated, then they should charge you for filing a false report. That's all I'm saying. Yep. I'll leave it alone. But I'm done. But it'll never. But it'll never happen. Never. It'll never, never happen because, right. in my personal opinion, as right, a person who, who who dealt with it, I'm gonna tell you like this: the court system is not made for fathers unless yes, you can prove the mother is insane. You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you can't prove that that woman is like licking windows and wearing a helmet, yep. smacking her head against the wall, <laughs> you have no standing chance. But You're it amazes right. me how history has changed where, and again, I hate to, you know, let's, let's play the history game. In colonial times, if there was a divorce, the kids went with the breadwinner. The kids went with the person who made the money. Fathers took responsibility, and they was the ones that was the breadwinner and took care of the kids because they were the ones financially responsible for the family. Now, you invented a thing called child support. Okay, so wait. So rather than you let me take care of my child, you'll rather me give money to someone else who doesn't have the means to take care of the child rather than just let me have my child and take care of them. Yep. And I lost. I and lost I'm, everything. And I'm wondering if this guy right here, who's the father, if he fell into that same trap right there. I would not be surprised if that was the circumstance with him that that deep down inside, that could have been the case with him and he had to stay away because sometimes it's like that. Like in order for you to maintain what you have, you have to stay away because it's all about the law of alibi and proxemics. Yes, if sir. I yes, sir. am not anywhere close, the allegation cannot stand. Yep. Like, well, I heard you say this. He was in fucking this state. You were in this state or he was in this city. He can be, that's can be proven nowhere around. So now you're obviously lying by virtue of proxemics. And that's sad. That is really sad, but that is a that no is punishment. Yeah, yeah. But there's no so the thing is is that there is no punishment. So, and again, I hate being I hate beating that dead horse in the ground. But I've yeah. said this multiple times. People do stuff when there's no repercussions, and they constantly do stuff when there's no repercussions, because that sense of power corrupts absolutely. I mean, not to be funny, look at certain people who took office. That taste of power can make a dictator fast as hell. Yeah. And that taste of power of saying, yo, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to lie on you to get what I want. Yes. Have fun, do you Jeff. realize do, do you realize how unscrupulous you have to be to say, I'm going to lie on you to get what I want? Have you? Has anyone ever seen that movie, um, Wall Street money never sleeps. Uh -uh. There is a line in that movie where Gecko is talking to the new bum, to the new guy on the block. He says, I'll stop telling the truth about you when you stop lying about me. That's powerful. Yeah. And that's something that you're not going to get in this day and age because it costs less than $100 to sue somebody. You're right. And here's this too. The criminal justice system needs victims. They need victims. They thrive on victims. And because of that, they're, they're given all of these, you know, laws and things like that uh, to support fathers 
to support mothers and have fathers not be there because it makes them relevant. And, and that's sad. So this is a whole other conversation we definitely need to have. And I will end, give you guys the last thing. But this is the last thing I'm going to say about it before we go to the next topic, because I think this is this is definitely good to talk about. Um, men, boys, teenagers. Don't get me wrong, ladies. We, we're definitely talking about protecting you all, too, because all four of us train women and men to kids, all that stuff. But this advice is for the guys. Pull out that fucking phone and record. I'm telling you, look, if the shit gets hot and heavy and you're around a woman or even a guy, I would definitely say a woman, pull out that phone and record because it is not the truth that sets you free. It is the proof of the truth that sets you free, especially if you got shit to lose. I, I cannot Amen. emphasize that enough. Amen. I yes, cannot sir. emphasize that enough. And then walk the fuck away. Jesus, walk away. Yes. Yes. You guys are spot on. Run away. Mark, Marquise, and Mike, you guys are spot on, you know. And I lost. I lost my ass in that divorce with those kids. One one of my kids I haven't seen in eight years because, oh my God, you know, hurts. Mama won. She's in the Navy now. She got a scholarship to the U.S. Naval Academy. And I'm so proud of her. But I have absolutely no contact with her for the last eight years. And I've tried with the therapy, with the uh, – with the uh, counselors, with the lawyers. But just like Marquis said, the judges don't give a fuck about what the dads want. They don't care. In this state, the dads lose every time. You got to prove she's a meth head or she's a freaking crazy, you know, whatever. It, it, at least in my experience. No, you're right. Mine too. Uh, you're right. Dads no, lose. Dads lose every time. And Marquis is absolutely right. He was spot on. And it's sad. It really is sad. And you could, and even I wouldn't tell, I don't care about the money. I didn't even care. I don't give a fuck how much money I got to pay to support my kid. That's my job. That's my duty. That's my obligation to support my kid. All I asked for in return was let me see my kid. Let yeah. me have the quality time with the kid. And I lost. The judges didn't care. They didn't give a fuck about me. But anyway, I'm done. Mark, no, no, Mike, let's move on. You're yeah. right. No, no. I, I, I'm glad this conversation went the way it did. Because someone later on or even presently watching would need to see this because we, I'm telling you, 16 hours is not enough. And platforms like this where people get to chime in and hear the realistic aspects of the, the situations and environments that surround the gun. That's the shit you can't put in a class because there isn't enough time. Like, if we don't talk about these things, you know, you're just going to invite that gun into that toxic situation. Invite that gun into this and try to make that as the answer for the problems that we just don't address, won't address, or address and aren't being heard about. You know? Yeah, that part. So the, I'm glad the conversation went there, and my heart goes out to you, Jacob. Damn, I didn't know it was that bad. Who? I'm not. Yeah, this ain't my own personal therapy session, but I just felt like I should throw that out there just to know that there are some dads who are trying to do the right thing, and you know, sometimes it just goes that way. Even when you're the good guy, even when you're trying to do the right thing, sometimes it just don't turn out that way. But I never threatened physical violence. I never threatened anybody. You know, dad's just got to learn sometimes. Hey, let it go. Maybe she'll come back. Maybe someday I'm, she'll come back, you know. I'm and all you can do. All four of us. That's all you can do is hope and pray that someday she'll see things on her own terms. And she'll yes. realize what happened. And she'll come back. That's all I can ask for.